Hello, uh, welcome to this video on the Datum Telescope, or otherwise known as my latest invention, the Plein Telescope. I invented this telescope, which is this object here in front of us, for several reasons. <clears throat> Partly, mainly, I found inadequacies with existing telescope designs, and I had to come up with a new concept it would solve my many problems I encountered. Many of these problems were associated with my curve of the earth measurements which you might have seen videos of. Uh, the first one was, the main one was this to uh, define and establish the true optical pathway of an optical device, measuring device. Uh, as trajectory, it's so important, I actually renamed trajectory as trajectory which more precise method of saying the transmit angle of direction. It's so important, which uh, this video will later on show you. Nextly, I needed to uh, define and establish datum measuring points. Existing telescopes are all round and they're very hard to get some sort of point, some flat surface to measure any any uh, defined point. This, this telescope has you know, these various datum points all around it and it has flat surfaces that allows me to mount uh, MEM electronic measuring uh, accelerometers and angling devices. Next encounter, problem I encountered was interfacing accurately into the real world. Real telescopes again, uh, existing telescopes again, are all round. They uh, have this problem where there's just, how do you measure plumb? How do you measure horizontal, true horizontal? Uh, they're just, being a round surface is extremely hard to measure all these angles. This device has now become so accurate, I believe, that it's virtually crossing over into a long range theodolite roughly equivalent to something you'd buy for a hundred thousand dollars. I, I believe I can uh, manufacture these things for about three hundred dollars, just as accurate. Employing these new concepts I've uh, developed. I also found that existing telescopes were um, prone to collimation problems and very hard to self-calibrate. So this telescope was designed to be self-calibrating, collimating, and also I needed something to, like a gyroscope, gyroscopically stabilise the, the instrument. The next thing I needed was to be versatile, to be able to swap in different lenses and uh, easily transport easy uh, transport the device anywhere. Also need to be cheap, safe and comprised of mainly of all off-the-shelf components. You just go into any hardware shop and buy the stuff to make this thing. So let's just uh, let's just move on now into some of the features of this telescope. The first one is defining and establishing this true optical pathway. But let's now start using this new word trajectory with a D. What I found was all my measurements with theodolites or telescopes or uh, telescopic sights on guns or whatever all had this inherent problem where I discovered that just by simply lining the system up and then by rotating the optical device, there was always this error. So for example, if I was to look through the camera, through the, sight this to, uh, telescope through this camera, and then have everything perfectly aligned to some stationary reference of a certain height, and then I was to actually rotate this mirror. Simply that, there would be a very slight error. What we would see is the image would shift up or down, ever so slightly. Now, 
With all my measurements relating to the curve of the Earth, I was looking at millimetre accuracy, so I couldn't afford to have the slightest error. Now, after this short introduction, there will be a video of me showing this mirror turning and two, two uh, still photos of a distant object just by simply moving this camera, although it's very precise, just that slightest, I can't even show you, it's probably an error of maybe a millimetre, maybe one and a half millimetres. And this point here, this datum point here, has moved slightly. Which, over a distance, will create a problem. Defining and establish the datum points. As again, this, is, this solves all these problems of a round surface. This is, every surface on this device is square, so that problem is solved. Interfacing accurately to the real world. Big problem. I always had this problem of encountering how do I lock some flat surface to measure my existing telescope into the real world. Couldn't do it. Very hard to do. But later on in the video, I'll show you how I achieved this, and by uh, a quite a clever technique that ca just evolved to me, uh, I've solved the problem. I believe, again, this system is so high, so accurate, it could be used as a long-range theodolite. It's self-calibrating. This, this is just a prototype. The existing, the, the production model will have a motor that will spin this lens around at a certain revs and it'll self-calibrate, self-collimate. So there's no need, this thing will, you pick it up off the shelf, apply the, install the mirror and it will self-collimate. In addition, I believe I can spin this heavy mirror at such a speed that it'll create a stabilizing gyro effect. So therefore when looking, say for example, at stars or long-range measurements, this device will stabilise and become very stable with this gyroscopic stability effect. Versatile. I have this at the moment showing a 200mm lens mounted with just a CCD camera. This can have any combination. In fact, this short span here could have a uh, 250 or 300mm lens or it could have a smaller lens. The camera can be periscope back and we could have light coming back and we could ex we could have uh, the camera back here in the back of this device. The boom itself is 90 millim 90, 900 millimetres but I had three metre booms with still stability so we could have in fact a three metre long focal length mirror. No problem at all. Again this thing, as you can see, is just aluminium extrusion. Cheap, safe, off the shelf. The safety thing, I've gone to CCDs, camera rays. I just, um, while doing some, especially terrestrial measurements, I copped a whole lot of uh, sunlight flashes through a lens on my other telescope, in my eye, and that was enough for me. I had a few scares, and I thought, no, that's it. Forget lenses from now on. Let's, I'm moving to CCDs. This is an 8 megabit camera, $100. Another few years, these things will be 16, gig, 16 meg and they'll be the same price. And there they go. You've got, you've got the same resolution as a human eye, so without all the safety. And you can plug your mobile phone into this. this thing, these things now are Wi-Fi. You can operate these from your lounge room. So I can see the purists point of view with with lenses but I think for safety and price I'd like all these devices to go to cameras. Okay now I think what we'll do is we'll move on and we'll demonstrate our first point. This is the most important point and I'll actually have to hammer this home because it's so important. Uh, I, I think yeah, I think we'll just have to keep going on about it with a few examples to show you why, how important it was. 
Here we have a still shot taken with a normal camera of Black Mountain Tower which is approximately 17 kilometres away. The view you would see is how the natural eye would perceive this from this distance. Here we have the same shot with the camera zoom maxed out. Here now we switch to the telescope with the mirror fixed in one position. Just ignore the low magnification and the non-sharpness of the image uh, since this is not really the aim of the exercise. Here we have the same shot with the mirror turned 180 degrees. Notice that the height of the tower has now increased by approximately 10 metres. That's an incredible amount of difference. So that means that the 2 millimetre error at the mirror end, over a 17 kilometre distance, has generated an error in the system of about 10 metres at the far end. Obviously the true optical angle of direction, trajectory, would be in the centre of these two images and I believe this condition exists in most optical systems out there today. Alright, so I'll just quickly try and hit home this establishing this true optical pathway. The first thing I encountered this with was um, theodolite. Now theodolite is basically a spirit level with a telescopic sight mounted on top. Simple explanation. Now what we do is we take the perfect level and we sight it and we know that we've got a reference, flat surfaces, and we take all our measurements from that. And from that we can adjust angles and more complex and these are precision instruments but basically what happens is the first image I ever, I ever captured was of an X. Say we have an X and we line it up perfectly in the centre of our viewing system smack bang between the crosshairs. Then I lined up all my systems, all my references, all my posts and just as a check, I thought, what would happen if I turned the scope 180 degrees? After lining everything up, the image moved. So somewhere between this point, the halfway point, is the actual true image where these things are. But I just couldn't find any way to rotate this tel telescope. The same thing I encountered with with, uh, with rifles. Now, you see a lot of videos of people who have the gun lined up and they have some scope and they shoot some bullet and everything is just never lined up to the true optical trajectory with that D on the end of it. So virtually the same thing happens. You shoot a gun with a scope this way but there's no way to rotate the scope another 180 degrees to get this half the error between the two. Now, halfway through this these exercise, I also invented another another device, which was called my plane gun. Now, there's a few videos on there's a video actually on uh, the plane gun on my channel if you would like to go to see it. But I'll pull it out now and show you what I encountered. So it's also hitting home this, this uh, optical trajectory. So this is so important, I have to show it again. Because uh, uh, not many people know about it. Okay, again this uh, word trajectory came in with my spinning barrel plin gun. Now basically how it happened was I was researching spinal cord research when I needed to measure a projectile, some sort of shooting device that would accurately shoot a projectile across a known distance and hit an exact spot every time. Now, uh, I needed to create a gun or some sort of device that would do this. Now, this is just a simple spring-loaded small 
as far as a small projectile, about four metres um, harmless, but it is extremely accurate. I looked at every site I could find on uh, YouTube or wherever to find people shooting guns and they all fall short of the basic uh, concept of ballistics. First off they would shoot a projectile and say, oh dear, look at that, how accurate that is. But the, 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 the gun had moved, I had no reference, so they'd shoot a bullet and they never had some way of showing the bullet where the gun was after the bullet left the barrel, which uh, I couldn't understand and they were all saying these are very accurate guns. So I had to virtually come up with my own system. The um, barrel spins at 100, roughly 100,000 RPM, so that's how the, uh, the projectile in parts stabilising spin. It's turbine driven. Uh, at 100,000 RPMs, this barrel becomes rock steady. The gyroscopic forces on this are just, this thing doesn't move. It has a laser that goes up the centre, which has the before and after shot spot. And there's a video on this uh, on, my, on my channel. But most importantly, go to see the video if you're interested in this, this accuracy of establishing the true optical trajectory. So there's quite a lot on that and I think that's probably enough on this now but we'll move on to the uh, next, next, next objective of the telescope and that's to establishing our real world datum points. Okay, interfacing to the real world, now that's a real problem as I said before on an around object. Now while I was actually developing this telescope uh, I was trying to figure out how will I interface to the real world, how will I measure plumb, how will I measure the horizon, how will I get all these levels uh, associated and referenced in, into my telescope. So I come up with this idea like somehow if I could build in a dumpy level or some you know, I didn't want to go to spirit levels because they're, they're not quite that accurate but by some unknown reason, this is always happens, usually happens quite a lot with people if you ask them about inventing. I think it's like the great wizard up there. I think he just leaves the book open for a second and I had a glance in it. That's how it came. It wasn't my idea, but this, this system solved my problem. And uh, it was like a gift from the cosmos. Certainly not mine. I'm not that intelligent. But basically what happens is, a phenomenon I discovered. If you were to look down a square tube, what happens is you get the same effect as a dumpy level. That is, you get a, like a kaleidoscope of the image from the reflection inside that doesn't require any of the complex mechanics as in a dumpy level to self-level it. Now, I'll just show you roughly on the, how this works. There's an X on the board there. If I line this up, you'll see down the tube that the X gets reflected as a, like a type, type of, a, similar to a kaleidoscope. But when the image is true in the centre, the image squares, reflects perfectly around the outs, around all sides. So when it's level, when it's square in the centre, the whole thing self-reflects and the image casts a perfect reflection all around, which in fact is a dumpy level without all the mechanics. Now, I'll just, uh, over, on the white, over on my wall here, I have a, a cupboard that sort of forms a bit of a X, and I'll show you a bit better demonstration of this. So it's, it's very important. But as I said, it came to me from the cosmos and solved my problem. Quickly, before we go to that uh, shot, here is a more of a demonstration of this boom using 900 mils. Extremely light, weighs nothing. And 
totally dismantleable. Okay, right, let's go to this uh, other shot. All right, here we are focusing on that cupboard I was talking about in my lab. Now, if you just notice, the camera is slightly... The cupboard is square, I know, because I built it. And uh, what happens is the camera is just slightly out of alignment. Do you notice the edge of the... One edge is... Let me just tilt it a bit. Notice that coming true? That's just... That's just with the camera on the tripod. Now what I'll do is I'll wheel that uh, telescope boom assembly in front of the cupboard so we can get a reference. Okay, moving across. Just by chance this um, aligns up perfectly, almost, to the bottom part of the telescope. So we should be able to see that now. If I just move that across to give you an idea where it sits. All right, I'll just stop that and we'll go and do the uh, look down the center of the boom. All right, here we are looking down the boom of the telescope assembly. And I have centered the camera exactly in the center. Now, you see the two little handles will actually move slightly as I move this to left and right. So the image becomes, so that gives us our one, one uh, axis alignment. I'll just tilt the assembly now, left and right, uh, to the top and bottom, so I'll just tilt it off. You can see the image moving again. Now bring it back to square. I think there's something there. And the other one is up and down. So the X, Y and Z axis is pretty... You can line this up. Uh, probably not very easy to see without the camera. Um, I haven't got any lines inside the telos uh, the boom, but ideally I've sort of done it reproduce this with uh, optical mirrors instead of this shiny mill finish on the, ca on the uh, inside the boom and it really stands out. It is unbelievably accurate as a dumpy level. Okay, I think that's sort of enough explanation and demonstration. Let's just go back and do a summary. Okay, we'll just sum up now. Uh, some of the questions I've been getting through comments, and uh, they come in roughly this order. Uh, when is version 3 of the curve of the Earth measurements going to happen? I'm possibly thinking about six months. I have to sort out this telescope design and probably I'm estimating six months away. Uh, also check out, investigate this optical trajectory, see that I'm not making up stories. Another one that comes up quite often is where do I get my hair cut? I thought it was obvious I cut my own. I get asked that a lot. The other one, why am I so serious? I don't know. I never make a joke. Okay, back to serious. Uh, I guess if you're a telescope manufacturer or you're a PhD student or you're someone, uh, the back of this email if you want to contact me, concerning, uh, if you want to develop this telescope. Um, you can research the patent, patent number there, it's at the patent office, anyone can look at that. So okay, well thanks very much for everyone for watching this video and um, stay tuned for the next development. Thank you.